Welcome to the Bowers Hill Interchange Improvement Study Update and Notice of Intent Announcement. As a reminder from previous presentations and study materials, the Bowers Hill Interchange Improvement Study covers the junction of I-664, I-64, I-264, U.S. Route 13, U.S. Route 58, U.S. Route 460, and Virginia Route 191, Jolliffe Road, as well as approximately seven miles north along I-664 to College Drive. You can view previous presentations and materials on our study website at www.bowershillinterchange.com. The purpose of this presentation is to provide an update on the study, provide an opportunity for the public to offer comments as part of the Federal Highway Administration's Notice of Intent, or NOI, and share the next steps for the study. This presentation will also share the range of alternatives that will be carried forward in the Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS, as documented in the NOI. As shared in previous presentations, in April 2019, the Federal Highway Administration, or FHWA, issued the Bowers Hill Interchange Improvement Study Environmental Assessment, or EA. In May 2020, the study area was expanded to incorporate seven miles north along I-664 and to consider interaction with existing and planned express lanes in the region. The study area was expanded to ensure the proposed improvements fully address the needs of the Bowers Hill Interchange. In fall and winter 2020, VDOT conducted early planning activities to prepare for the NEPA process. In September 2020, impact methodologies were developed and concurred upon by the agencies involved in the study. During the fall of 2020, the Virginia Department of Transportation, VDOT, conducted field investigations to identify resources in the study area. The purpose and need for the study was developed and concurred upon by the agencies in December 2020. The purpose and need relied on information gathered from both agencies and the public via a survey conducted in the fall which gathered nearly 1,300 responses. Information on the purpose and need and history of the study can be found on the project website at BowersHillInterchange.com. In March 2021, VDOT held a citizen comment opportunity to present preliminary alternative concepts and receive public comments. VDOT Citizen Common Opportunity was held from February 12th through March 25th, 2021 to update the public on the study, share preliminary concepts, and collect public input on the concepts developed to date. Nearly 1,700 people visited the Bowers Hill Interchange Improvement Study Citizen Common Opportunity webpage, and more than 240 comments were received through the online survey, email, and mailed-in comments. Thank you to all who participated. 84% of respondents indicated improvements throughout the entire study area were needed. Following and informed by the Citizen Common Opportunity, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency concurred with VDOT on the range of alternatives to be carried forward for evaluation in the EIS. FHWA has issued the NOI formally initiating the Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS, that will be completed to comply with National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA. The NOI summarizes work done to date on the study and serves as the starting point for the formal EIS process. The NOI and supporting documentation can be found on the study website at www.bowershillinterchange.com for review and to inform comments. In support of the FHWA NOI, VDOT is now accepting public comment on the information contained in the NOI, including the alternatives to be carried forward, as well as any other information that may inform the EIS. The preliminary alternative concepts were evaluated on how well they address the purpose and need of this study, which is to reduce congestion, improve travel reliability, and provide additional travel choice within the study area. VDOT presented several possible alternative concepts to address the purpose and need for the study during the citizen comment opportunity. Earlier versions of these concepts included different options for the Bowers Hill interchange, including a full reconstruction of the interchange and the addition of new braided ramps which were carried over from the EA. 
Now that the EIS process has been formally initiated, the Bowers Hill Interchange concepts will be evaluated based on new technical studies to determine the best interchange configurations for the alternatives that advance through the study. The following assessments were informed by and concurred upon following the citizen comment opportunity based on their ability to meet the purpose and need. No build. The no build would not meet any of the needs for the study. However, it is retained as a point of comparison for the alternatives moving forward as required for an EIS study. Concepts A1, A2, and Concepts B1, B2. The general purpose lane improvements would reduce congestion on the I-664 mainline with added capacity. They would, to varying degrees, provide some improvement to travel reliability with improvements to travel time and improved incident management capabilities. The general purpose improvements would not provide additional travel choice for vehicles using the facility, including bus service, which would not be consistent with the regional plans. Therefore, the general purpose lane improvements would not meet the purpose and need and are not retained for further evaluation in the EIS. Concepts C and D. The managed lanes improvements would reduce congestion on the I-664 mainline with added capacity and would provide more consistent travel speeds in the managed lane. The managed lanes improvements would provide improvement to travel reliability with improvements to travel time and improved incident management capabilities. The managed lanes improvements would provide the additional added capacity and provide policymakers with options to provide additional travel choice within the study area. Managed lane scenarios could include but are not limited to high occupancy vehicle or HOV lanes or high occupancy toll or HOT lanes, also referred to as express lanes. A decision on the type of managed lanes has not been made at this time. Because these managed lane improvements would meet all elements of the purpose and need, they are both retained for further evaluation in the EIS. Concept E, collector, distributor, or CD lanes around interchanges would not address congestion on the I-664 mainline and would only provide localized, small-scale benefits to congestion and travel reliability. The CD lane improvements would not provide additional travel choice for vehicles using the facility. Therefore, it was determined that the CD lanes as standalone improvements would not meet the purpose and need and are not retained for further evaluation. This does not preclude CD lanes from being implemented as part of a preferred alternative that would be documented in the EIS or during more detailed design phases that would follow the NEPA process. Concept F, Transportation Systems Management, Transportation Demand Management, or TSMTDM improvements would not address congestion on the entire I-664 mainline and would only provide localized, small-scale benefits to congestion and travel reliability. TSM TDM improvements would not provide additional travel choice for all vehicles using the facility. Therefore, standalone TSM TDM improvements would not meet the purpose and need and are not retained for further evaluation. However, TSM TDM improvements could be incorporated as part of a preferred alternative that would be documented in the EIS or considered separately within the corridor. The TSM TDM improvements considered as part of this process were recommended from a separate study, the I-64, I-664 corridor improvement study. For more information on this study, visit www.i-64-664publicinfo.com. Concept G, transit-only improvements would not address congestion on the I-664 mainline nor improve travel reliability or safety. The Virginia Department of Rail and Public Transportation, DRPT, has indicated that transit-only lanes are not necessary in this corridor as they would not measurably reduce the number of vehicle trips through the study area. Because transit-only improvements would not measurably reduce the number of trips in the study area, they would not reduce 
congestion or provide travel reliability. Transit-only improvements would provide additional travel choice, but that choice would not experience any travel time advantages through the study area. Therefore, transit-only improvements would not meet the purpose and need and are not retained for further evaluation. Enhanced transit is not precluded from the corridor or under a preferred alternative documented in the EIS or as an independent project. Through evaluation of the ability of alternative concepts to meet the purpose and need, coupled with public input, it was determined that three concepts would be carried forward for analysis in the EIS, the no-build as required for the EIS study, concept C, which would add one managed lane with a part-time drivable shoulder in each direction, and concept D, which would add two managed lanes in each direction. These alternatives would meet the purpose and need elements I identified for this study to reduce congestion, improve travel reliability, and provide additional travel choice. With the EIS formally underway, VDOT will assess potential impacts of the alternatives to surrounding resources and properties, estimate costs associated with the alternatives, and recommend the preferred alternative that best meets the needs of the study while balancing impacts and cost. This work includes determining if the widening of the interstate should occur to the median, the outside, or a combination of both. VDOT intends to make its recommendation on a preferred alternative to the public and agencies involved in the study in early 2022. The preferred alternative and all supporting documentation will be presented in the draft EIS, which is anticipated to be available for public review in summer 2022. If you would like to provide any additional comments on the study, you can provide your comments on the study website at vdotmeeting.com backslash Bowers Hill. Mail your comments to Bowers Hill Interchange Improvement Study, 11827 Cannon Boulevard, Suite 402, Newport News, Virginia, 23606. Or email your comments to bowershill at v.virginia.gov using the subject line Bowers Hill Interchange. Stay updated on the study progress by visiting the study website at bowershillinterchange.com and sign up for the monthly newsletter. Future public comment opportunities will be shared on the project website and through our emailed newsletter. Thank you for your interest in this important study.